Hello and welcome to MIP TV and um, for our usual special segment of MIP TV which is of course Bob Cook's book reviews. So welcome Bob and you've got a cracking book in this section haven't you? We've just been talking about it off air haven't we? Yeah it's a it's a real favourite book of mine. It comes from uh, 1989 so some time ago and it's called Diagnosis and Treatment of multiple personality disorder. Wow. By Frank Clough. K. Uh, sorry, my apologies. Uh, Frank Putnam. P. U. T. N. A. M. That's fine. Okay, so multiple. A lot of people think multiple personalities. You know, and they may get some kind of ideas from horror films. It's usually the sort of thing that gets kind of quite ghoulish headlines but what is multiple personality disorder Bob what is it well it's the old name really for what is called now dissociative identity disorder so before they changed the classification I don't know how many years ago in the ICD-9 and the DSM-5 um, or 4 if you like uh, it's, it was called multiple personality disorder basically it's when the ego fragments into many different parts. So, in other words, we've got many discrete personalities, um, which well, often lay dormant and sometimes emerge, but they control the individual's actions. Okay, so for those, for those perhaps who are watching and not quite know what the ego is, the ego really is, is the part of us that kind of exists in consciousness, doesn't it? It kind of guides us along, as mm. opposed to the id, which is the the kind of child, the fiery child of the personality and the superego, which is like the, the, the super parent. So the ego is how we function in the world. It's who we are really, isn't it? In a lot right. of theories. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and what you're saying is, is that in some cases, and we may talk about what those cases are, people mm. fragment. So they have, you know, they have different identities. And how would those identities present, Bob? Would they be really different from the person you initially meet? Oh, yes. So if we think of a honeycomb, mm. I don't know if you've picked up a honeycomb. Yeah. But it's many, many, many different pockets, isn't it? Yeah. And if we imagine that each of those pockets is like a separate ego or, or, or a person, if you want to look at it that way, um, then each one of those pockets has, in TA terms, would have a parent, adult, child. In other words, they would be a, like a specific person. And these fragmentations of the ego are split in reaction to trauma. Right. So if, if there's been a real traumatic occasion, say like um, sexual abuse or a violation of uh, a person's um, ego, whether it be trauma, uh, the level I've just talked about or not, then in order to protect itself, the ego, in order to protect itself, um, will, uh, how can I put it, put it, put it, fragment and cut itself off to different parts of the consciousness or unconsciousness. Um, so they hide, so that, that, that person, that particular time, which has been so traumatized, is um, hived off, fragmented off, um, and usually only accessible um, through therapy. Uh, of course, that part of that self can be triggered off um, in particular um, moments. So, for example, let's say when they're having sex, say someone's been sexually abused. Yes. So it could be triggered off by a sexual um, moment in real time, and, the, and that other alter or another alter which had been captured in time will present itself as a real person right so it would it would to the to the lay person who wouldn't be trained this or it would it, it would look like and they use very kind of simplistic terms here and not wanting to be rude or judgmental but for someone who wasn't a therapist it would look like someone is playing many different parts correct very good that's that's a good way to look at it and um let me give you an example of that um I've taken two, at least two people who've had many different identities um, and wanted to integrate those identities into a whole, 
um, have come to me for treatment for at least 10 or 11 years. Now I'm thinking of one uh, person particularly who arrived through my uh, waiting room and she had problems particularly in personal life in any sense of continuity, also she didn't remember time and sometimes she'd find herself in uh, dangerous places or difficult uh, scenarios or even different geographical places and she didn't know how she got there. Wow. So have amnesia and she came to the um, the uh, institute she knew me particularly in terms of my professional uh, process and um, in the first session I was talking to a very bright energetic um, intellectual person in many ways um, and then she said do you know Bob and I said what she said I have 142 pairs of shoes Good grief. And I'm guessing from that, that would be because each of those personalities would buy a pair of shoes. Yes, and have my, so each alter might have 20 different pairs of shoes. And I knew which person she was by the shoes or the clothes that she wore. How interesting. How interesting. Well, maybe we'll do a longer interview on that because that sounds really fascinating. But yeah. in terms of this book by Frank Putnam, how how does that help a clinician? And I'm... Uh, well, let me tell you. Yeah. Putnam provides an organisational map of how to treat um, uh, people suffering from multiple personality disorder. I mean, before that, he talks about how to diagnose them uh, as well. But if we're talking about the treatment, he provides a map of how to work with the different parts of the MPD. In other words... Uh, if we look at this in terms of calling these different parts, if you like, the name we're going to use here is alters. Mm. So each one of these people are called alters. So he provides an organisational map of how to work with every particular alters. And he puts them into classifications to the old, older alters, the elder alters, the younger alters, and he talks about how do we actually meet them and talk to these different fragmented parts of the self. Yeah, because I'm guessing it, it would, if, if you have someone with 20 different personalities, depending on what they present with, potentially you could have 20 different clients, couldn't you? Yeah, that's exactly. And you know what Putnam says, and this is very true, you have to go through what we call the host altar to actually talk to the other alters. Because in the organisational map that Putnam talks about, the host altar, that's the one in the here and now, that is actually present more than any other altar, okay, mm -hmm. knows about many of the other altars, the younger ones, the even the older ones, or the ones cut off and frozen in time, but they don't know so much about other altars. So the host altar, who knows most of the other altars, is like a mediator, for me to be able to talk to these different parts of the self. It, it, it strikes me, Bob, and I, I may be naive in, in this response, but it strikes, it strikes me of an of a old kind of technique a lot of support workers use, working with people with schizophrenia, to try and get the voices that people have to talk to each other. Yeah, to be externalised. Yeah, to be externalised. So this book gives a map, it's a clinician's book, I'm presuming it's not a book that someone could just buy and then toddle off and treat people with multiple personalities or, no, or dissociated identity no. or it's, it's not one of those things one could read and say, oh, I could do this now. Oh, no, 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 no. You need to be pretty experienced. I mean, when I started working with my first multiple, if you like, I've been practicing for many, many years. And it, in some ways it was quite scary. Um, uh, and scary in two or three ways. One was the huge level of trauma all these uh, the people present with. And secondly, uh, as I started to talk to um, different altars, I got quite scared at the amount of time they would spend in these altars. And actually, for at one time, would we ever get back to present day? So, no, this is a book for a professional clinician and actually takes a lot of courage uh, to be able to work w with these types of people with severe dissociation and amnesia. It sounds like a fascinating book, a clinician's book for someone who's really 
specialised. Mm. One last question, Bob. Through the years, this book was in 1986, is that right? It first came out. Well. Yeah. Is there any more revisions to it? Has, has, has any kind of opinion changed in the last 20-plus uh, years? Yeah, now we've got, a, remember, we've got a, a new diagnostic term for this particular term called dissociative identity disorder. Now, dissociative identity disorder has at one level daydreaming, which we all do, mm -hmm. yeah, and at the other end, fragmentation of the personality to a severe sense, uh, losing of identity at a fragmented process, which is multiple personality disorder. So you get many books that talks about the continuum, and also you get books that talks about how to work at the excessive continuum, which I'm talking about here, and how to talk work at the neurotic level. So you, you have many specialisms, but, but if we're just talking about the MPD side or the severe DID side, they will talk about how to deal with dissociation and amnesia the same way as Putnam talked. How interesting. How interesting. So the, the idea and the approach seem to remain intact. It's just that the, the classification and the language of, around the presentations altered through the years. Yeah, yeah, because you still need to talk to each fragmented part of the self. And the cure is the same, and that's full-blown integration. Yes. Now, of course, very rarely do you get full-blown, uh, uh, you know, full-blown integration. Really, the best you're going to get is helping them manage their lives more functionally. Yes. Yeah. It sounds like a fascinating book. It sounds like a fascinating topic, Bob, and one that it might, uh, I, you know, if you're up for, we could revisit perhaps in a video all of its own. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, but the book is called Diagnosis and Treatment of Multiple Personality Disorders. It's by Frank Putnam. We'll put a picture of it up at the end, and if you go to the, the information bar below the video, I'll put a link to the book or the latest incantation of it. People can inspect it. As always, we always say this at the video, Bob isn't being paid. This isn't a paid placement uh, for, Bob's, uh, for, for Bob. This is just Bob sharing his passion of books. So thank you so much, Bob Cook. Thank you.